Hey everybody, what's going on? It's John here to talk about Tales of the Jedi. I have watched all six episodes. I am going to give you my review of those. First, a very quick non-spoiler review uh, so that if you don't want to be spoiled yet, you can watch that and then get out of here. Uh, but immediately following that on this very same video, I will go through my thoughts uh, on all six episodes, one of which in particular was most memorable and probably most impactful. But to start things off, my initial non-spoiler review of the series, it was Tales of the Jedi so far, I imagine we're going to have more of these in the future, um, was more than I thought it was going to be. I really did believe that Tales of the Jedi would be more of a Forces of Destiny type of show, more of a uh, fables, not necessarily too canon. Um, I know we got uh, the first episode was revealed, I believe, at Star Wars Celebration. I didn't catch it. Um, but as I heard more and more about the series, I understood more of what it would be. And it actually delivered on a lot of things more than I had, had expected. Um, I'm not the biggest Star Wars animation fan. I'm more of a Rebels guy than a Clone Wars person. Um, not the hugest Ahsoka person either. But both tales here, the pathway of Ahsoka and the pathway of Dooku, parallel each other nicely. Or if you want to say contradict each other nicely. Uh, but I have to say the fourth episode, without question, called The Sith Lord, um, really adds layers to a lot of this saga a lot of this story especially the prequels and the transition into the empire and of course the original trilogy you'll get what i mean when i get to my spoiler review in just a moment but definitely check out tales of the jedi really great i love the run times too you know 10 to 15 minutes or so pretty easy breezy blast right through them and uh, have a good time and i feel like they pack enough punch where they didn't need to have that uh, stringent 22 minute need for tv ad space time slots they were able to tell the story they wanted to tell in the amount of time they had and i like that they're able to do that now with star wars animation so tales of the jedi i enjoyed it more than i thought i would and uh especially one episode in particular that being the sith lord the fourth episode now on to my spoiler review i'm just gonna say it out of the gate the fourth episode the sith lord uh takes place shortly after qui-gon fights maul on tatooine so you sort of can picture watching that scene and he's all out of breath and he's all oh my god i'm so tired i just fought that zabrak i don't know what just happened right into this sort of situation where they're in the jedi temple and dooku uh deletes we actually watch and see count dooku delete kamino from the archive memory at the jedi temple using sifo ds's login credentials so what was his password like jedi one two three or just his name, Sifo Diaz. Or is it maybe it was just Password? I don't know. But either way, Dooku had it. He got in there. And he deleted Kamino from the archive memory. So that adds layers to Attack of the Clones. I like that. I thought that was uh, really well done. Uh, and then the bigger part, Yaddle shows up. Bryce Dallas Howard voicing Yaddle. Doesn't speak like Yoda. I uh, thought that to be uh, very cool and more interesting because if they hold true to what George Lucas always wanted, he wants Yoda to remain quite a bit of a mystery and him being the only one that we know of so far that speaks like that, especially out of his species, um, keeps, uh, that mystery alive of what he's all about and where he came from and why he is the way he is. Um, but ultimately we see a confrontation and we're looking at, uh, right before Qui-Gon Jinn's funeral, and we have uh, the birth of Darth Tyrannus as Count Dooku um, is clearly working with Palpatine and Yaddle finds that out and confronts them and uh, she's killed. And you can say what you want about that. I know George Lucas publicly has said he's not the biggest fan of Yaddle. I believe Dave Filoni has um, reiter reiterated that too. And maybe this is sort of his way to put an end to the story of Yaddle in Star Wars. But she played an impact role here. She discovered that uh, Count Dooku was Darth Tyrannus and she uh, fought gallantly as Count Dooku would say but ultimately perished uh, as Palpatine looked on as Dooku uh, put the crushing blow on Yaddle as she uh, attempted to confront and stop uh, Dooku joining the dark side and Darth Sidious. Uh, other episodes of course you have the first one Life and Death where we see the birth of Ahsoka. So we're really seeing Ahsoka's whole life. Assuming we're going to see her death, maybe in the Ahsoka series, maybe not in live action, who knows. 
But what a fleshed out character at this point from someone who was almost made fun of a bit and mocked as uh, this, this sort of like teenage annoying character when she first debuted in the Clone Wars movie to now this amazingly fleshed out arc and character, perhaps one of the most fleshed out Star Wars characters of all time. We've had a lot of Ahsoka content and now we get to see her birth and her uh, grandparents saying that she is going to be a Jedi based on how um, she handled herself at a very young age and became entombed with the Force. Um, the second episode, Justice, all about doing what's right, making the right choice. I uh, see a lot of parallels between Count Dooku and Qui-Gon, uh, comparing that to the relationship between Qu Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. Even the almost the, the exact same line, you are a much wiser man than I. I really love that a lot. Uh, it gave me another look at Dooku, and I get to see you know, Qui-Gon, uh, a younger Qui-Gon, maybe more experienced Qui-Gon, still having that rebellious spirit. And you get that he sort of obtain that rebellious spirit in a way, probably naturally, but also in a way from Dooku himself. So um, I found that to be very, very interesting. And of course, the voice, Count Dooku's voice sounds a lot like Alan Rickman. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, uh, of course, Corey Burton, who does Cad Bane, among others. And then uh, episode three, Choices, Dooku's recklessness. It, it cost him a shot at the council. Again, another parallel to Qui-Gon Jinn. And uh, Windu wind up getting it over him. So we see Mace Windu becoming a part of the Jedi Council. Uh, there's clearly jealousy there from Count Dooku. And Qui-Gon's rogue ways also prevented him uh, from the Council down the future. Again, history repeats itself. It's like poetry. It rhymes. So Filoni, nail on the head there. Uh, so I enjoyed that episode too. Uh, and then you have Practice Makes Perfect, my least favorite episode. Because I'm not a big clone guy. I I'm not a big fan of the clone troopers. And this is all about Ahsoka... Uh, being challenged and tested and stunned over and over again uh, throughout this episode, uh, showing her mettle and her drive to keep getting better. Uh, and then, of course, the last episode, Resolve, more somber tone. We actually see Ahsoka at Padme's funeral. Bail Organa recognizes her, tracks her down, and we get a better understanding uh, an explanation. We know really why Ahsoka's not in the original trilogy because she didn't exist yet. But for the story purposes, we get a better understanding of why Ahsoka was nowhere to be found during the original trilogy. She sort of walks away from it all. Having seen Anakin turn to the dark side and the end of the Clone Wars, we see her uh, seeing who uh, Vader has become. And uh, of course, her fight with him in Rebels. And now we see her having witnessed Padme's funeral and just completely breaking her heart and soul. So uh, it, 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 it helps lend the explanation as to where did Ahsoka go? She's this great warrior, great Jedi. How come she wasn't there to fight during the original trilogy? These types of things help explain that and help make the story make sense retroactively. So that's my review. Again, episode four is the big one. The, the Sith Lord, I think, takes this from a, a good series to uh, significant. I think that episode is really good and really helps Tales of the Jedi get on found footing and hopefully adds more episodes to it for other Jedi in the future. So uh, thumbs up for me. I enjoyed it. And again, I like the easy watch, 10 to 15 minutes, and it still packs a punch without uh, having to be forced to confide within that 22-minute cable advertisement space uh, time slot. So let me know what you think in the comments. I tried to burn through this as fast as I could. Uh, hopefully you're, this, this 10 minutes here of, between my non-spoiler and spoiler review gave you an idea of what this show and series is all about. Uh, but I look forward to seeing more from it. And you can hear more of my thoughts on this series on the Resistance broadcast uh, every Monday and Thursday on your favorite audio app and the YouTube channel and, of course, Star Wars Newsnet. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey if you want to talk to me about it more there. Uh, other than that, until next time, I'll see you around, kids.